We've saved the best to last, I think. Perhaps the, the most uncertain, but also the most interesting. The topic for the, the remainder of this module now is consciousness. And that's a word that is not easy to approach in a scientific register by any means. It's a very important word, and it means lots of different things, as usual, in cognitive science. If we just do a Google image search for consciousness, as I did here, what we find are lots of questions. What is consciousness? The mystery of consciousness. Uh, there's all kinds of questions about it because it's not easy to say what consciousness is. But let's start with uh, something that we can be reasonably certain of, shall we? How about if I ask you, are you conscious? Take a moment to check. How would you know? What would you look at? I mean, could you Google it? If it's a question with an answer, could you not just Google it? I think you'll agree that that's going to be difficult. And that while you probably, I'm assuming, insist correctly that you are conscious, it's not the kind of thing that you can Google, even if that's a fact. Now, the word as used by different communities of scholars, practitioners, and everyday folk, means very many things. And we're going to explore lots of those here. You may assume that consciousness is, for example, personal, but we'll find that there are also impersonal views of consciousness, in which consciousness is not something that belongs to a first person. You may say, I'm conscious, and my dog is conscious, and my mother is conscious, and that's three, and there's probably lots of others in the world, so there's billions of consciousnesses. Or you may say there's only one consciousness. Both of these are possible ways to understand that word. One might think that consciousness is the same thing as mind, whatever the mind. We've noticed that the word mind means many different things. There's no the mind. Same thing goes for thought, for example. And consciousness might, in your view, be the same thing as mind. You might mean the same thing, or you might not. Consciousness might be assumed to be something which is unique to humans, which sets us apart. Descartes was of this view. Consciousness might be a property of every living being. Or consciousness, in some views, might be divine. These views all coexist. And the more we talk about consciousness, we begin to wonder whether we're talking about a thing or a process or some aspect of something else. So it's not even clear at this stage whether consciousness should be understood as a noun or a verb or an adjective. The words we use around this really matter. And sometimes we spot ourselves saying strange things. Sometimes people talk about consciousness as if it was a kind of a fluid secreted by the brain, like the liver secretes bile, for example. And when we find ourselves using the word and that kind of image comes to mind, we might pause for thought. Now, there's no single story to be told here. In the contemporary landscape, this kind of nonsensical image is very popular. The cosmic galaxy brain that reaches out into the cosmos. It's clearly not a terribly realistic picture, but it captures something of the collective imagination. It captures something of how most people in a modern Western technologized society might think of themselves when they think of themselves as possessing consciousness. But that would be a view of consciousness that's specific to that kind of environment and that kind of person. Other cultures might view consciousness as like a giant impersonal fire burning in everything and everyone. This is a mosquito larva. Lived and died in Lake Malawi a long time ago. Should animals be considered conscious? Now, I've chosen this picture because that looks a bit like a teddy bear. You don't think of a mosquito larva as being a terribly important being. And I chose a photograph that gave it a human-like face with an, with an eye. 
And so when we're looking at that, it's not hard to think, maybe the mosquito larva is conscious. Maybe the way that you think about consciousness is going to be massively influenced by your cultural background. We'll meet some uh, approaches to consciousness that come from the contemplative traditions, various forms of yoga and meditation. This is a tantric monk meditating in a very hostile environment filled with heads and demons and such like. Maybe that's, maybe he knows more about consciousness than we do. But we're not from that environment and we're probably not, don't have access to a cave like that. And so the way we think about this, consciousness is going to be determined by people who've discussed the matter before. One very important one here is Sigmund Freud. Sigmund Freud, the father of psychoanalysis, um, gave us an approach to minds that has never become a scientifically tractable, shall we say. Psychoanalysis persists 100 years after Freud, um, but it's not the kind of thing that find, it's not easily treatable in a scientific context. It's more of a practice. Nonetheless, Freud's thinking here influenced us all, and it influenced you. Because if you use the word unconscious or subconscious, you are, whether you know it or not, doing so because Freud invented these terms. The idea that some parts of my mental life are in the light, are conscious, and some parts that actually dictate how I feel, how I'm motivated, why I respond emotionally in one situation but not in another, we consign those to something we think of as the unconscious. Those words didn't mean anything before Sigmund Freud. Uh, Sigmund Freud's approach didn't become scientific, and yet these words now influence how we think about things. Another psychoanalyst of the time who split from Freud was Carl Jung, who had a completely different notion of the unconscious. He regarded the unconscious as collective, not as something belonging to any one person, but kind of universal. And I'm not sure I'd follow him on this. He thought that that collective universal unconscious was identical in all individuals. And that's a strange kind of claim. You might or might not want to follow Carl on that. Um, but when you encounter something like this, a claim from the Encyclopedia of Neuroscience simply stated consciousness is a multifaceted concept, we can probably agree on that, that has two dimensions, wait, hold on, arousal or wakefulness, that is level of consciousness, and awareness, content of consciousness. What should you do when you meet a bold claim like this coming from science? The answer is you should either disregard it completely because it clearly is not sufficiently informed about the richness of the concept it's discussing, or we can regard it as a very narrow approach to tease out one sense of this term consciousness. That's a more charitable reading of this. We should, you should not be intimidated by this kind of statement or take it as fact.